Hey everybody, Lars here. Uh, as you can see, it is Friday night, June 10th, and I am back in the friendly confines on Hickory Street New in Metuchen, New Jersey, and I am no longer in New Orleans. Uh, if you've never been to New Orleans, go there. Go there immediately. It is incredibly fun. The food, the architecture, the history, the things that are in the city of New Orleans are absolutely amazing. If you're a Civil War buff, there's a million things to do. If you're an, an any kind of history person, there are a million things to do. It is absolutely wonderful. Every night I would just wander the French Quarter and try out different restaurants and go into different bars, and it was just, it was absolutely wonderful. Anyway, through some small miracle, I'm still alive, and I'm back in the great state of New Jersey in order to do the first review video for Unit 2, because I didn't want, I don't, you know the my story, and I've told it a million times. You don't have two weeks, you've got ten days. So I want to try and front load your resources, so that means even though the unit just started today, technically... And you're probably taking a rest from Unit 1, and I don't begrudge you your rest, because everybody did really well. I saw the quizzes. The quizzes looked fantastic. Hans has already looked at the assignments, so we're we're chugging along pretty well. Hopefully, we'll be able to send you some grades early next week as far as Unit 1 is concerned. Um, but I want to get to the resources up front. Uh, unit 2 encompasses the first video we're going to do right here about strings and lists. Then there's going to be another video about looping and iteration, and that's when things really get going. Because once you can do that, boom, 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 we're really going to do some great stuff. Case in point, after that, I'm going to do a quick video about uh, Project Euler and Project Euler problem number six and show you how even with just the two, three weeks that we've had, uh, we can still – we can now start solving you know some problems and some real problems out there. Um, all right, we'll get to announcements and a bunch of other stuff at the end of the video. For now, I whipped up some code for us that we are going to look at. And I don't want to look at that list stuff just yet. And let me run it so I have the output off to the side. Look at that. Fantastic. All right, first thing we look at when we start up Unit 2, and units, Unit 2's overall theme is we want to teach you about sequences as far as the way we handle data in the small sequence of characters and strings, a little bit larger is different data objects and lists, a little bit larger still is, you know, off on the hard drive files with data in it that are just lists of things. So we're slowly but surely going to teach you about the different sequences of data and then the next thing you learn about is, well, when things are sequenced, why does that make life easy? Because of iteration, because then we can start creating routines that one by one goes through these sequences and either performs the same operation or can examine everything and do a bunch of things that way. It's the beginning of us learning how to organize our data in our head so we can write programs and do things. But anyway, <coughs> I don't want to get too far afield. Let's just do the nitty gritty for strings first. So let's just trace through this code and see what we got here. Uh, the first thing we see is I define a variable called my string and I make it equal to this, I believe, 42 character long, uh, no, 43, my mistake, character long string here. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. What if that's from which movie? The Pygmalion, right? So I now have that string, it's in that variable. What are some of the things we can start doing with our strings? Well, the first thing is pretty easy, and you see it over here, 43. I print the length of the string. So you can use the len function on strings, and it tells you how long the string is. So if you were to count the characters here, you would see that there are 43 characters in the string. Okay, But that brings up the next interesting point. When I come down here and I say access the characters with an index, and this is the first time you're really seeing indexing. So just think of... The string as a sequence of characters, and those characters are numbered. Now, we're computer scientists, so we start counting at zero. So we start here. Zero would be T. One would be H. Two would be E. The blank, because blank spots count, would be three. The R would be four, and so on. So when I say access the characters with an index, and I say print my string of five, what should I get? There's one. There's zero. One, two, three, because the blank starts. Four, five. It should be a lowercase a. If you come over here, it is. Okay? Now, the second line, when we're using indexes, uses something called 
uh, slicing. And that allows us to take a little subsection. Actually, in some other languages, it's called subsection. Um, but this is a little subsection of the program. But this is Python, so there's got to be something weird going on. This is how Python handles index ranges. The first item here, 5, is the first thing you want. So similar to what we listed up above, and you can see the snippet up here, it starts with the A, okay, because that was number five. The end of the range, 15, is the first thing you don't want. The end of ranges in Python are exclusive, okay? It's the first thing that you don't want. I will say that over and over. I will drill it into your head. The end of the range is the first thing you don't want. So if you came up here and counted, you would see that 15 is I right there. And that's the first thing we don't want. So this prints from 5 to 14. And that's what we see here, in and spot right there. Okay. Now, we did a length on my string. Okay. And it said 43. So if we came down here and we were just normal thinking folk, we would think, okay, my string of 43 should give me the last item in the list. But will it? Let's run it and find out. It does not. We blow up. Now, why did we blow up and get an error? It's because we start counting at zero. And if you have 43 items and you started counting at zero, it means that N is the 42nd item because it started with zero. So what happens in an out-of-bounds error here? Out-of-range, out-of-bounds. What's happening is that, I mean, to use a simpler number, uh, let's say I have something with 10 items and I ask for the 11th item. Well, the programming language is going to be like, it doesn't exist. What are you doing to me? I'm not going to do it. There are other languages out there that will say, okay, I'll give you what's there. But that causes a whole bunch of bigger problems. Python catches it and tells you, no, 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 no. You have something with 43 elements in it. You just asked for the 44th element. So something is a little wrong there. So now, knowing that, knowing I have 0 through 42 to choose from, I go back and change that to, let me do this. I go back and change that to 42, and everything is okay in the world again. I get the last item, which is that N right there. Okay? Now, you could also notice down here we can do index math. You can add, you can subtract, you can do arithmetic, even relational operations, inside of brackets to determine what you want to go grab. Okay? Now, this is this will come in handy, you'll see, because sometimes, especially, you know, in gaming stuff, some of the game stuff I do, you want to set up a real long string with a whole bunch of stuff in it, and the index is going to tell you exactly where to go and grab different things that you need, and sometimes you use math in order to do that. Like if you have... 10 seven character words and you want to grab the fifth one well then you just multiply by seven go to that spot and grab it so there'll be different you know algorithms and things like that that'll use this kind of indexing but you could see this just my string of nine if you came up here and counted you'd see that it's the i and that's why here boom boom we print the i twice okay so we can do that as well <coughs> then just to finish things up we go to the string methods um, method. And again, I know we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. A method is just the term that people who do object oriented programming use for functions. Okay. And these things are basically just functions we can run on our data. You are going to understand what I just said a whole lot more in unit five when we do object orientation. But for now, just think of these things as little side programs that we can run on our data. So I have my string, if I say my string dot upper, and then open paren, close paren, what, this is what prints over here. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane is all in uppercase. Now, there's something important to remember about this. It doesn't keep it in uppercase. You are not changing the string. You're just printing it out in uppercase. You're not taking that string and changing it. And this is a good time to introduce this concept. You're not changing that string because strings don't change. They are what's called immutable. Okay. When you change a string, which you're actually going to do with the replace in the very next line, you're not really altering an existing string. You're creating a new one. Okay. And then renaming it. So with upper, upper just says, well, maybe they just want to show it in uppercase for a title of a page or something like that. But look, so it prints it out and it doesn't change it. The second one, 
print mystring.replace Spain with France. You can see down here we've replaced Spain with France in this line. I just said strings are immutable, and then here you've seen the change. So you're probably like, Lars, what are you talking about? What replace has done in the background is created a whole new string and then renamed it. Okay, it went and deleted the old my string and then used it again as a variable name for the new string that got created. Strings are immutable. If you try to change them, you will quickly find out that your life is not going to be easy. Okay, the last one here is we just use the count method. And all count does is it counts how many ends appear in this string. So here, this tells me there should be six. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it works. Okay, so that's some of the things that we do with strings. Um, I might show you some stuff later on at the end of this video to do some other stuff with strings because uh, there's a little snafu with reverse indexing, but I don't know, time-wise, I don't know if things are going to work out because it is not, I'm looking at the clock and it's 9.03 and that means the basketball game is starting and NBA basketball doesn't watch itself. And if Cleveland wins, the series will be tied, but I digress. All right, let's zot this out. One, two, three, and come down here and... Okay, that's good. So then I just got to get rid of the one on the bottom. And start looking about the second thing, which is lists. Let's, you know what? Let's save this and run it. Does it run? Yes, it does. But it would be nicer if I had all of that up here for us to do a little compare and contrast. There we go. Okay, hopefully I got all this on the screen. Uh, list, I think I put it this way in the slides is a string on steroids, okay? Lists are like, and I've said this before, I know bookcases, because I recently cleaned out my bookcases. Bookcases for you to grab and use to put your things in. And it sounds simple, but it's not. In computer programming, having containers and things to grab to put your data in and organize your data and be able to run all these different methods on it, which you'll see we do, is absolutely fantastic. It's very easy, trust me. Play around with lists, get to know lists, look them up, go on the web, go on the online Python documentation and look up about lists, learn about lists, because they, and you're going to see, you're going to see in the remainder of this course, they are priceless, absolutely priceless. So if you get familiarity with using lists and manipulating lists, then your life is going to be easy. Because I know for me, when I create a program, the first thing I do, oh, okay, let me uh, grab everything that starts with A and uh, put it in a blank list and then take that list and do this. And blah, 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 blah. It's easy. It's really, it just makes your life easy, life easy. Now, let's just show you some stuff that's going on here and we'll discuss the difference from strings and stuff like that. Creating a list is easy. I just grab a variable called my list and I make it equal to the elements of the list surrounded by brackets, not braces, brackets. And here I just say, give me a list with four characters, and they happen to be my name. Um, so you're probably saying to yourself, okay, I've just created a list and it's got four characters. Why is this different from a string? You know, why can't I just use a string? Um, I'll show you. If you say print my list, it comes here and prints the list out like this in brackets and with the individual characters. But I can index, just like I can with a string here, and grab the third item, because we start counting at zero. So zero, one, two, R, and I print the R over here. Now we get to the two reasons why lists are powerful. One, you can put different types in them. You don't have to, strings are just characters. Everything you do there is gonna be seen as a character. With strings, I mean with lists, you can keep floating point numbers, uh, in uh, integers, strings, booleans, other lists. You can have lists of lists. And later when we do unit five, we're going to be creating objects. And you can keep objects in lists. And lists are incredibly powerful for these reasons. Now, you can not only keep different types within a list, and here you can see these little two lines prove two different points. I go to my list of two, which is my R, and I change it to the integer seven. And then I print it out and look at that. 
So that shows you that different data types can exist in the same list because that seven is an integer. But it also shows you something else that makes it different from strings. And what is that? It's mutable. You can change it. That list lets you change items in the middle of it on the fly. You can't do that with strings. You'll see if you run it in the code and you try to change things, it won't let you change things. Lists let you change things. I mean, even eh, we will come up. I'll come up and do it later. Um, you can change things with lists. And as you can see here, uh, I create a second list, my list too, and I add an integer, a float, a string, another integer, and then the previous list. So I throw a list in a list. And then when I print it, you can see it right here. Just puts the list in there like any other item. Okay, you just shelve like Russian dolls. You can just shelve it. Now you can also run methods and different things with your lists. And here we see the append method, which is incredibly important. You're going to use it. Get a look at it. And here I just took the second list that I made and I appended one more item to it, which is just a string. Okay. And then I printed that out. So those are the two things you want to keep in mind with lists. One is that they can, you can keep different types. You can keep all kinds of data, objects, floats, everything you want. And the second, and probably the most important thing is that it's mutable. You can change things on the fly and keep the same name. So when you're dealing with data, most times you're going to want to deal with lists. Okay, Strings are nice when you're printing out text and you're doing things with text. And you're, you know, it's a good thing to get familiar with the methods that allow you to manipulate strings as well as the methods that allow you to manipulate lists. But lists down the road are going to be more important. Back in the dinosaur days, when dinosaurs roamed the earth in the 80s, when I was studying computer science at university, um, we called them arrays. And we would learn different things to do with arrays, counting at zero and inserting things in arrays and taking things out and boom, boom, boom. Well, here in Python, it's been made easy for us and it's done with lists. And there are a whole bunch of methods and things that we can do with lists. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to bother with this. Second part, eh, I got some time and it's only the first quarter I'm going to miss. Let's do this. Okay, last semester I had a student bring up something that was kind of buggy about Python. And I thought it was good to look at. I'm going to create a string and I'm going to call it hello world, string four, okay? Um, and then I'm going to print string four. Let's see if this works for me. It does. Let's see. Can I get this up? So I have it next to the code that I'm working with. All right. There we go. So hello world. Now, I guess basically what we're going to look at is the differences that we run into when we grab something with an index or we do it with an index range. Uh, as you know, we can print pieces of the puzzle. So if I want to print the last thing in Hello World and I ask for string, and there are 11 characters there, so 0 through 10, what happens if I ask for 11? That's going to blow up, right? Of course it's going to blow up. So if I come down here, though, and I ask for 10... So I ask for 10, I should get the last item in the list. Okay, makes sense. Now, the difference becomes is now I use 11 because I'm using a range. And this is the first thing I don't want. So how does this work? Works just fine. It prints out hello world just like this print up here did. Because that's the thing. first thing I don't want. So technically you're doing 0 through 10. Okay, but it's a little strange because 11 really doesn't exist. And if you do just 11, it's an out-of-bounds error. Okay, but, you know, kind of survivable, not the end of the world, not kind of weird. This is where it gets a little kooky. Okay, strings allow you to use something called reverse indexing. So if I go string 4 and I say negative 1, what's it going to give me? It's going to give me that D right there because instead of going from 0 to 10, I can also reference the characters in my string by going from negative 1 to negative 2 to negative 3 by going backwards. 
So if I go negative 1 here, I think it's going to print me out a D. Let's find out. And it does because that's the negative 1. But here's the rub. Now let's say I want to use a range. Let's say I want to go negative 2 to negative 4. What's going to happen when I print that out? I save and I print it, and what happens is it prints nothing because Python breaks there. It doesn't like, even though you're doing reverse indexing, it doesn't like going backwards. It wants to print forwards. It wants to print the, the list going forwards, and I can show you this by just changing them around and saying, okay, what about giving me negative 4 to negative 2? What happens then? We get it. We get the OR, which is right there. Okay. Now, negative 2 is the first thing you don't want, so you don't get that L. But you get the O, you get negative 4, and you get negative 3. Okay? Now, here's the bugaboo. I believe last semester I had a student who said, I want to go negative 11 to negative 1. And he was basically trying to use reverse indexing to print the whole string. And he got, hello, blah, blah, blah. Without the D, you see the D is missing there? So what does a normal programmer who just learned what we learned think? They go, oh, it's the first thing I don't want, so let's just put a zero there. Rerun it. Now I get nothing because it doesn't like the negative being in front of the zero, and it doesn't want to print that way. So using, I mean, you can't, even if you did a one, it'll give you the H only. Okay, it doesn't know what to do here as far as printing the whole string reverse. Now, technically, you could say, well, then don't do the whole thing reverse because you can just do print string four and get it that way. But what I used to tell the students is this. Give it a negative one. Let's run this again so that you're missing the D. But now you can use something called concatenation. We are allowed to use the plus sign to put strings together. So I would do that. So what am I doing? I'm printing the range from negative 11 to negative 2, because that's the first thing I don't want. But then I'm adding the negative 1 at the end of it. I'm allowed to access it if I'm only reverse indexing one item. If I try to use it with range, it blows up. So now I'm printing hello world again. All right? Just a little side thing to make you aware of some of the weirdness that happens from time to time. I'm pretty sure I know why they do this. Well, in Python, when this index, you know, well, actually, here, I'll show you. Do, 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 let me, one, two, three, sots this out. Uh, right here, one, two, three. So, let's say... What am I printing there? String, fun. Okay, hello world three times, so I'll get rid of this one. See how this is from 0 to 11? It's the first thing I don't want. When I'm using a range, I can make mistakes and go way over range. See? Now, in, in any other context, I, if I put just 25 in there, it's going to give me you know an out-of-bounds error. It's going to say, you're crazy. The string is out of range. You don't do that. But... If I give it a range that I want to print from, well, then it prints it, prints it fine, okay? And you can, this, this can be arbitrarily big. And it just says, oh, I figured this guy wants the whole string. But the minute you do it with something else, things blow up. That's kind of what's happening down there. And I think the programmers did something in the Python code in order to accommodate this situation, but then it kind of works badly for them when it comes to reverse indexing. The common answer is, you know what? Don't reverse index. <laughs> if you want to print something out, just print it out. You don't have to print it out using reverse index. But there might be a reason why somebody wants to do an algorithm that way or somebody wants to access things that way. Okay? So I just wanted to show you that. I, th I think it's neat. And I think the more you play around, the more you get to learn things and the more you get to enjoy things. Because at the end of the day, it's puzzle solving. It's all like big puzzles. All right, a grand finale? Why not? Look at all that. Whoa. All right, so that's all of the code. As you know, you don't have to type all this stuff in. I'm going to take stringslist.py, and I'm going to put it in our resource folder, and you're going to have it. So right off the bat, first day of the unit, 
I'm going to make sure that you have not just the slides, but you're also going to have this first review video and this program to play around with, at least for a couple days. Because if I don't do it tomorrow, I don't think I'm going to do it later tonight. I might do you all later tonight. You'd be shocked. I went away for four days, and I have a pile of work to do that would just make your head spin off. And I just I need to attack it a little bit because, of course, I have to cut my grass now. It's like the Amazon outside. And ugh, I don't want to go nuts. And I have to go to my sister's because I have to sign a bunch of power of attorney stuff. We're selling our father's house and blah, blah, blah. So this is, this is going to be a bizarre weekend because I had to go to New Orleans and run around the front quarter for three days. Eh, okay, sera, sera. Um, All right, some announcements. You guys did, did really good on the quiz. I haven't eyeballed the assignments yet, but I think you did well on them too. So awesome. Keep up the good work. I'm ever so slightly scared that the pace is going to be too quick. You guys seem to be handling it. If you engage with the resources over this weekend, you're going to be in, in Fat City. I'm going to get you the first homework assignment over the weekend. Hopefully, I'm also going to get you information about the midterm project, about engaging with those three different online Python resources, and then writing a small paper, comparing and contrasting them, and, and talking about how they work for you. Uh, learn Python the hard way, a couple of MIT lectures online, Code Academy, and some good stuff. It'll get you some good practice. And you know what? Maybe you'll even learn a little bit about pedagogy and, and how we teach computer languages because there's different ways to do it. And you, you can run the spectrum from just watching lecture to having to do it online and do it yourself and having to do it that minute. And also a thing called mastery learning where you have to be proficient before you can move on. A lot of times in the United States education system, we don't do that. We only do – I hell, I'm not doing it because we have time constraints. So no matter how well you learn strings and lists, in two weeks, we're not doing them anymore. That might not be the best way to do things. Okay, It might be better to have a student sit and stick with something until they get it and then let them move on. Well, anyway, in education, that's called mastery learning. And uh, some of the online resources you run into pretty much follow the tenets of mastery learning. So they're, they're pretty interesting. So keep that stuff in mind when you look at all that stuff. I'm going to get you the – it's just a one uh, ditto sheet explaining the project, and it's, you know, I think it's due a month from now. But I want to give you the time so you can engage with the resources early and, wink, wink, it's getting extra practice, which is why I do it. So then you're going to go over Boolean algebra again. You're going to go over if-else again. You're going to go over arithmetic again. You're going to go over strings and lists again. You're going to do all of this stuff over and over again, and you're going to learn it. And that's the whole – point of things. There's a method behind my madness. All right. So I'll get you the stuff for that assignment. I'll get you assignment one, which is called cow pie. You'll get a kick out of that. Um, and then hopefully if I don't get it to you by Sunday, maybe by Monday, I'll get you the second review video so that you have most of the resources you need. Because again, it's summertime, summertime crunch. Um, this unit's going to be over with on the 20th, which is only 10 days from now. All right. But don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. It's all good, and you're going to have fun. I need to sleep, <laughs> as you can probably imagine. I am an exhausted fellow, but I got to, I got a bunch of stuff I got to do first. So One of them is to watch a basketball game. It's going on right now, but I got the TV muted. But I'll figure out what's going on with that. Then I'll get some work done. Then maybe I'll do another Python video. Maybe I'll cut the grass tomorrow. Maybe I'll do all these things. All right? I'll be around all weekend. I'll be around my machine. So if anything goes... Kooky, or you have any questions, put them in the forums. I'll be watching the forums all weekend long. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. If you there's something you'd rather not put in the forums, but you want an answer or you want to know something, um, send me an email. BigLars at cs.records.edu. That said, there's no such thing as a dumb question. So please, please put Python questions in the forums. But that said, if there's something you don't want to do, hit me. I don't care. There's a bunch of ways to communicate and get that done. All right? then you have a fantastic weekend. I am going to be in touch tomorrow and the next day. And you be good and stay out of trouble, okay? All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.